Okay, so I just wanted to run through a few things here uh, with regard to the lesson that we're on right now. Again, it is lesson 6-5. We are looking at using the distributive property uh, when finding area of shapes. Now, right now, of course, we're working with uh, with rectangles. And don't mind when it says something like 6 by 6 because, you know, that is a square. But rectangles and squares are uh, essentially and, and technically the same thing. Um, rectangles we typically look at as uh, shapes that have one longer side than another, this one being an example over here. But the uh, but what we're doing will work with, with, uh, with any of these uh, types of geometric shapes here. So uh, now remember that the distributive property tells us that we can break multiplication facts into smaller, smaller equations to help us solve problems. So in this case, we could do this looking at area as well. Um, so in, we know that looking at this one, it's six, right? Because there are six squares on this side. Oh, let me switch to our uh, other pen type here. We know that there are six on this side. On the left, right here. And hold on a second here. I've got a, a cat who... Uh, keeps wanting to help us out here okay so we have six there and of course we have another six across the top right well what we want to do is look at breaking it apart so we know that and let's figure this one out first okay so let's switch over to green here you can look at this as again six by six right so six times six well we know that six times six equals 36 which means that uh, our area would be 36 square units now remember that you're always going to have square units when you're working with uh, area because we're talking about the entire surface of the of the figure here so all of these squares right here so let's take a look at breaking this apart though what if we drew a line straight down the middle pretend that's straight down the middle that would change this into 6 times 3, right? And 6 times 3, because there are 3 on, on both sides here. Now we could have drawn the line in a slightly different place, and we could have had 6 times 4 and 6 times 2 as well. But let's take a look at that. So 6 times 3 is 18. We've got two of those, right? 6 times 3 is 18. Well, what do we do next? What is... What's 18 plus 18? Now remember, start with the 8s first here. Now we have 16, carry that 1. It's 36. So, no matter how you look at this, 6 times 6 or 6 times 3 plus 6 times 3, we get 36. So now it says, what multiplication facts describe the areas of the two smaller rectangles? Well, what we did was we did 6 times 3, we'll do it like this, with the parentheses, plus 6 times 3. And that was what we used as our equation to solve this, how we broke it down into two smaller things, which means that that's the same thing as 6 times 6. And we know ultimately, no matter what, we're going to get 36 square units, write that again, for our area now let's take a look over here the first one that we have is our our larger shape right so we have six times five so we have six times five right here's the six here's the five is the same as six times two plus three two plus three right here equals five now we could also look at it this way, 6 times 2, right, 6 times 2, these two right here, plus 6 times 3. And no matter what, you're going to get the same answer. And we can work that out too, 6 times 5 is 30, right, you can skip count to get to that one. 6 times 5 is 30, and then we're looking at 6 times 2. 
which equals 12, and 6 times 3, which equals 18. Remember, always look to see if you've done this before. We already figured out 6 times 3 over here, so you know it's 18. And then you're going to take 12 and 18 and add those two together. And remember, 8 and 2 first, you end up with 10. Carry that 1, and you have 30. So no matter what, we end up with 30 square units. Okay, let's scroll down and take a quick look at, uh, at our independent practice section just to make sure that we understand this as well as we can. Uh, and, you know, once you guys get a hang of doing this, you're going to remember, hey, we've done this before. We've, you, we've used the distributive property. We've used it uh, in multiplication. And, uh, and we're using it in multiplication again. We're just looking at shapes. We're just making our lives a little easier by breaking them apart in case we need to, right? So in this case, we have 5 times 7. That's, our, that's the, the longer side here is 7. 4 plus 3 is 7. So we have 5 times 7 equals 5 times 4 plus 3. And then it's also the same thing as 5 times 4 plus 5 times 3. And remember what I said, you can always double check and make sure you have these by checking what the actual products would be, right? The products, or in this case, the products and the sum of the products. So we can look at that, right? We know that 5 times 7, you can skip count again for this one. You all know your 5s really well. 5 times 7 is 35. The other thing that you can also do is score back up. Remember that you did... You did uh, uh, 5 times 6 right here. Remember that uh, 5 times 6 and 6 times 5 are the same thing, right? That's the commutative property. So all you have to do in that case is just add one more 5, and then you'll have your answer. So 5 times 7 is 35. 35 square units. Now, like I've said before, I'm using the uh, SQ to abbreviate square square units and we know that these are just units because they haven't told us that they're uh, they're feet or centimeters or yards or anything like that now if they had told us we would be using those uh, so we have five times seven equals 35 now let's try this five times four well that's 20 right and five times three all you have to do there is take away one five you get 15 now we're adding 20 plus 15. Okay, 5 plus 0 is still 5. 2 plus 1 is 3. Once again, we have 35. 35 square units. So let's take a look over here. Now we know that the, the longer side, the total of the longer side here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, it says right here is 8, so we're doing 3 times 8 is the same thing as... 3 times 4 plus 4. Because 4 plus 4 is 8. And we broke it apart, right? Look at this again. You also could do it this way. 3 times 4 and 3 times 4. And we have 3 times 4 plus 3 times 4. Okay? Now, you don't have to figure out the, uh, the answers to these because right here they are uh, just having you, like the instructions say right here, complete the equation but you can break it apart to make sure that you've got it right if that helps you to do that and it's good practice now down here again remember guys I, and i'm going to keep repeating this always read the instructions and always look for any information they give you on the page they don't just write on here because it's fun they write it because it's information that you should have so you can use the distributive property to help you find areas of rectangles now that's something of course we've already talked about now, over here, we have the longer side is actually 6, so we've got 4 times 6. So let's start by this. Let's start writing out the equations the way they did it. 4 times 6 equals, remember, we're going to do it just like the ones up here. So we're going to do it equals 4 times, and put the rest in parentheses, 2 plus 4. 2 plus 4. And then that equals, we do it the same way we did it up here, 
put your parentheses, that equals 4 times 2 plus 4 times 4. And again, on this page, they did not ask you to solve the equations. They only asked you to write them. So that's all you have to do. But if you do want to solve them, again, that's it is good practice. And we've done a little bit of that up here. But that is all you're doing right here is writing the equation that represents the picture. Uh, in this case, this right here is the full equation. Okay, so we're going to go over a little bit more of this uh, as we move forward, but I just wanted to uh, to go over it again one more time in case you all needed anything. If you have any questions or if you need any help, um, just let me know. Okay, we'll see you guys next time. <laughs>